Hello, in this video, we're going to create um, this image where we have it like a doll look for our model. And we're going to use the overlay compositing to put it in an environment like this crazy lab or whatever. Um, add some effects with the fire and hands, all this. And of course, this is based on a, fa a fan kind of from Witcher's um, Yennefer. I don't know if you're familiar with that character or not there. So it's kind of based on this um, cosplay role play. And we just add a little bit more to this, create kind of our look perspective and the fun with this. So we'll do all of these changes. And of course, we'll begin with uh, this, our base image from Photoshoot. Uh, we'll go process this in a camera raw. And of course, we'll import after in a Photoshop and just going to do this way. So let's go ahead and start working on this project. So before we begin work on this Yanifer, um kind of cosplay editing with the doll head, all this kind of effect, I want to point to you, you can download a lot of um, backgrounds, assets and everything from um, my Patreon website. If you come join it, here you can see a lot of um, painterly background that I create in 3D wings, videos, tutorials, so very many, many assets. You can actually come join and uh, download it. Most of them for free. Few of them will have just uh, heavily, very heavily discount prices, but you can find all a lot of, lot of assets and some of them they were going to use in this video. And another one was using in like angels with angel wings and other ones you can find there. So it is a geek at play at Patreon. Go join to receive full, full benefits of everything. But you don't require to do this. You can do this easy just with what you can have maybe in your library or you, or you can create it. So let's go start working on this image. And right here, I have multiple uh, photos was created. The one I was going to select, it's, you can see where person straight, uh, look straight at us. And this is actually for a few reasons I found out it's work the best. One, if we have a straight head, so we can increase size of the eyes and kind of rework on head, it's make much easier. You can always to do when head turn left and right, but best result you probably will getting when it's going straight forward, look at you, kind of like this pose, so you can modify shape very easy. So this is what I'm going to open inside the camera raw. And right here in the camera raw, first things I want to show you right, if we click on properties, I'm working with 16 bit color depth, and I'm working with Adobe RGB color space. You can change this on what workflow you have it and which color space you're working. But for all mine from Photoshoot to post-production and everything, I'm working with Adobe RGB. 16-bit allowed me to produce a better gradients, less fringing and other stuff. So again, you can access this by clicking or on the Adobe RGB or going to open preference. So either way, either way will work. Okay, so let's go right here, zoom out. And as we're working, for me, one is important to have it full information from the image. We shot this in the camera raw and camera raw have it more information than screen can be displayed. And some information, like for example, you see right here, top of the hair, it's too wide. Even it does not display on our screen, but this does mean the information is lost. We can fix this by taking our highlights and bring them down. Usually I bring highlights a little bit down as long as I can see the information in those areas where look too bright, too white. Okay, next let's go down. We'll take just a little bit pop up shadows, not too much. Usually when you increase shadows, it will introduce the digital noise to our image, which we don't want to have it. Let's go down and sharpening. I'm increasing sharpening anywhere between 80, 60 and 80 and recently in camera, it was shot on Canon R5. It's have an anti-aliasing filter before sensor. So it's kind of make it softer than in real. And what I'm doing is just restoring to original sharpness. You don't necessarily need to do this in uh, your work uh, or a camera because some Nikons and some even Canon don't have this filter. So you just, it's for you, how's your eye? If you think it's a little bit off, you can adjust this as well. Okay, next we're going down and because I took it some highlights down, 
our skin become a little bit more flattened. So we'll take orange and bring a little bit closer. You can see we can just add a little bit this highlight. To understand what we need at highlight in shadows, it is primarily how we see our shapes in a 2D. So our screen is two-dimensional. Even with Photoshop, it's three-dimensional, and but image uh, right now we don't work with VR or 3D, it's two-dimensional. In two-dimensional, we cannot send uh, shapes during the parallax of our vision we can only do through the shadows and highlights and it's what give it us information so right here by having in luminosity mode we increasing a bit highlights in those areas on the skin so it's produced a little bit better shape for us and we'll do a little bit more of this later when we start working with the um, dodge and burn kind of techniques below i have the in a profile on the optics remove chromatic abbreviation and use it lens profile correction enabled for both of those so when we're done let's go ahead and click open right now this image will be open inside the adobe photoshop and i'm using the uh, cc version so it whatever latest one version is released it's up to there but you can do most of these techniques easy in early versions as well okay so right here we have our image and first step before i want anything i'm just going to create copy so my bottom copy will be a reference for me and this one is where i start modifying okay so we'll have it like sizes or other things so let's go see what we have right here we can see we have a backlight on the side and we have another one stand leg coming out and it's a little bit skewed to the side so what we want to do is select our um, patch tool right here and we're going to select the area we need it and just move and copy we don't need to worry too much about precisely or look exactly the same we just need to keep it similar texturing and coloring on the back because we're going to replace it with with overlay background so let's go do the same for the leg next i want to do take the cropping and sizing and you can see we have a little bit more size on the one side than other ones let's kind of make it even maybe about right here and i'm looking between head and shoulder kind of maybe pop up a little bit on the bottom and increase a little bit on the top i want to be sure it says delete crop pixels and content to wear we're not needed too much of deleted uh, crop pixels but we don't don't want to use it content to wear so now we'll go press enter and here we can see we have a very nice beautiful uh, background extent so this is our first step when we're creating um, with our model next let's go ahead and before we retouch on a skin or anything we start working on the head itself so for this i'm just going to select lasso tool going around don't go precise like around there and we're going control command c control command v copy paste so we created the head just copy this area next we're going to uh, resize it command Control t is shortcut for this or you can go to edit free transform okay next we'll take one corner and we'll just uh, stretching i want to be proportionally so i'm just going around there like this maybe as a doll head so we need to increase the size so always want to take opacity and take a little bit down Let's go zoom closer and right here you can see how we're going one thing what i like to is have it the chin end of the chin with another chin and nose on the same so this way we have it a little bit nicer um kind of more proportional with the neck does not look too off we can reuse the neck of the model and we'll blend the other hair very easy in so when we're done with this we can go ahead press 100 percent in and you can see it's already <laughs> almost don't need to do anything but we're going to fix a couple things so i'm going to create a mask on our layer okay, let's go call its head so we know what it is we'll take our brush and i want to be sure it's 10 percent opacity and soft edge and we can start right here we'll be sure our mask is selected black color 10 percent we can start 
kind of painting. I'm going to maybe increase to 40%. So going faster. And I want to reduce. You notice the shoulders getting smaller. So we can always increase amount of shoulders if we need it, but I want to be sure our neck is smaller. And we can leave it work on a hair. Don't worry about if you're doing too much. We kind of will go back and forward on some of this stuff. But I want to be sure here is kind of done. Okay, let's go ahead closer. And we'll just kind of removing a little bit neck. This area, there you go. You can see it's come up nicely. Um, closer to her face, because we have a little bit sharper edge, we can take hard ground right here. Okay, pop up to about 70%. And by the way, you'll notice right here, past 70, 60. If you press top numbers, three, four, you can see how it's changed. If I press very fast, four, four, it's 44%. So for a shortcut, just press number and it will help you with opacity. So now I'm just going very close to her skin, right there. Kind of help a little bit. Okay. And of course, we'll use it softer after to kind of come together. There you go. We can always zoom a little bit closer if you need it. And just be sure we're adjusting. Nicer. Look right here, we have a double chin. It's because with another, and we can always X key. X key, it's help us to switch between foreground, baroque, background colors. And because we're using colors, it is helping us to there you go, have it correct. Okay, there you go, kind of like this, a little bit. Oops. See, right here, need to be smoother out a little bit more. But we'll retouch this as well after. So let's go ahead and switch back to our soft round. And you can see by the hair, so I won't go around this area. So we have a little bit nicer integration with background. We don't need a very hard line there. Also, because we increase in resolution, our details, it's become smaller. So we need to be careful on this. And we can also just a little bit work out closer to her right here. Okay, notice we have some problem with the hair, which is okay. Because remember, we can have an X, 30%, and we can kind of start painting back hair around there. And that's one reason why I say it's kind of nice. Um, easiest, easiest way probably to do if you don't have it hair by the neck. So that way you don't need to worry about. But if you do, it's fine. We'll just, just paint it like this right here a little bit. Oops. Right here, gone too aggressively. So we'll just restore leave it to this area let's look there you go so we already have our big head down for this let's go next we uh and i'm looking maybe you know maybe just a little bit increase on a top at this area so what i was meaning like right there we'll have it canvas again content aware just pop up a little bit taller so sometimes you maybe need to go back and forward, readjusting, but with a big head, so it will be give it a little bit better. Okay, at this point we have our um, head done. I don't want to retouch all the way. So right now I'm going to work a little bit more on the shape of the head. And for this, I'm going to select Control Shift Alt E, Command Option Alt E on a Mac. It's take all visible layers, combine them in a brand new layer. And we'll call this liquify. It's what we're going to use. We'll go to filter, liquify. And and this tool, what we want to be sure, just let's go link all of them together. We'll go to increase image eye size because it was creepy dolls. You know, they always have big eyes. We'll do this. Just pop up a little bit on the height. Also on the eyes. Okay widen a little bit more bring them out so they look a little bit more natural 
Next, we'll leave it eye distance and tilt same. Let's bring nose a little bit higher. Okay, and we want the reduced width of the nose. It's just like almost, you know, this creepy Barbie kind of, so that's what we're going after. We'll want to smile, leave. We could play a little bit more with the lip. Lip maybe bring smaller, kind of more uh, angry type lips. Okay, like this, maybe. There you go. Kind of make almost like alien <laughs> type look. Okay. Drop down forehead. Bring chin slightly up. There you go. Jawline. Kind of like this almost. So it's kind of because you can play whatever you think it will work in your case. When we're done, we'll go click OK. And you know what? We don't need to do just once. We always can do a second pass. So and for this one, we can go filter. Let's go to liquify again. And we can do the same things for the eyes. Okay, so right here we have it. You see how we can increase even make even bigger eyes way over border with them. There you go. We'll take same. Bring those just a little bit up. And smaller here kind of again we creating this doll looking okay bring it a little bit careful on that one there you go so kind of a little bit more doll okay let's click OK and we can preview how we twist it on a face before and after. Well, let's look way different. Okay, so that is our first step with liquify tool. And next, um, let's go use it a little bit right here, increasing the shoulders and maybe a little bit on a waist to rework. So for this one, I want to take just this and duplicate it. So I'm going again, and this is a destructive editing. So it's meaning I have no way to go back. Um, if I create maybe smart object, I can do it. But just overall, because it's kind of creative process for me, I feel okay with that to do this. So let's go ahead right here. We have it, our model and we're going to edit, transform, and we'll go to warp. And a warp, you'll notice we have it options we can kind of modify. And that's what I want. I want to take and kind of spread a little bit on the bottom. So like right there. Okay, also on the middle, we can bring back in. And spread just a little bit on the top. So we're almost squeezing middle part in. Okay, like right there. We don't want to face two and squeeze will restore a little bit on the face we can go back around there okay and we want to spread this one just a little bit more out around here okay there you go just around middle Okay, let's go ahead when you're done, press enter. So we can preview again what we have so far. Okay, we go to select the tool and you can see. So not that much, but we kind of expand a little bit. Don't worry, this foot looks too big, which we can easy fix by removing and masking with one below. So for this, we can create mask, take a brush, get closer, black color, if you notice. And we'll just go, let's go zero, so we can just very fast to do this one. And there you go. So we can even restore that foot. Let's go back to press one. And I just want to be sure, kind of blend a little bit, okay, here. So in this case, we can preserve that small original foot with not stretchy, but dress 
still kind of expanding this way. So let's go ahead again, Control Shift Alt E, Command Optional E to create new. I'll go click Shape, and we'll go into Filter, Liquify. So we'll go back to Liquify, and usually I'll do this in two different passes. One was for face, and another one will be for uh, body. And what I want to do for the body, you can see right here we have it these areas i want a little bit um rework on this and we have a couple we have it's expand and contract so if we do expand non-directional we can just go like this and push it slightly in and again this is going with this effect very artificial look okay all those you know creepy dolls that you see kind of so it's what we're going to do we're going to create we could use a directional um, like area where we're going up and down, but I think this one will work just fine. We just need to be a little bit careful to push it. We don't care of distortion of the background at all, because I say that go to replace here a little bit. And on this one, we need to be a little bit more careful. Oops. We got, got that way and kind of pushing slightly out. So it is take a little bit time, don't rush. We could also just create multi you can you know what you can do this so many ways. Okay, to do this. Easy, just you can paint with a clone tool. You can use a pen tool and just put it mask. You have it. You can do this so many ways this effect but all what we need to do is just creating this um effect of the thinner on the middle and i'm going just over all those you know some barbie creepy dolls kind of it's what we're going after you don't need to do these but there you go just help us a little bit creating this uh, just slightly effect. Okay, when we're gone, let's go click OK. And we can preview just slightly before and after. Okay, so we're done with the shapes. Next, let's work on retouching um, our face. So I'm going to call it Stotch Up. And we're going to use the Spot Healing Brush. So we don't need it very much on this face and i'm just looking what we have here we have it right here just small toe chops well could remove this one so it just will be a little bit more closer to what was in the movie we don't necessarily need to do this right here just teeny tiny toe chop not too much okay maybe right here let's remove this hair right there okay just a little bit touch up anywhere else we have it wrinkles I don't worry about wrinkles because we will mask them out okay I think that's look good okay next we need to do it's smooth it a little bit skin so for this control shift that e command option alt e take all visible images combine them in one Let's go call it smoothing and we'll go to filter noise dust and scratches and in there we want to set usually like this you can see all shape you just don't recognize some small details right here i can see a few of them so maybe one pop up my little bit bigger 35 i think that will good okay click ok and after this we want take hold down alt or option click on the mask and it will create mask black mask so it's hiding everything we just have it. and we just need to take a brush okay and we want to be sure it's a soft round brush 10 percent opacity white color and we can mask in <laughs> remove mask and put it in back some of the smoothness this smoothness is work very well if we want to reduce some detailizations and it's also will create effect of the doll of painting a little bit because dolls may 
don't have it. They're made from plastic. And that's kind of what we're doing right here. Plastification is a little bit of the skin. So let's look. But we want to keep it texture. Because if we remove texture all the way, it will be look kind of not pleasant even. Not too real. I know it's kind of imperfections would make perfect. Okay, so we will go here. Create a round. Okay. And let's go just in case, just touch up hands. Okay. Let's go back to our hands. And right here, white. There you go. So we'll just a little bit soften on our hands. One hand, second hand. And remember, I also tell you about that uh, wrinkles on the dress. So we'll go use the same things that we did here. We'll go zoom out. And I'm just going to, with 20%, de-wrinkle a little bit this dress. So we don't need to do too much, just some in areas. We don't want to do with their um, chains because it will blur them out. But general right here with the dress we can do uh, blue kind of blow out a little bit. It's make less details smoother, so it does not jump in our eyes. And this is portion part of when you create. You want to be sure the um, your viewers point to the right way. In this case, we'll want to work with the eyes, kind of going with this. Okay, so let's look what we have so far and. I want to work on our eyes. And problem is when we increase eyes, eyes you can see they don't look very good a little bit. So we can need to fix a little bit of them. Uh, one thing to fix it, I think we can go and liquefy and kind of push this stuff away, but also we'll ask some resolution. If you have an image and I done before, I can copy images with big guys from other ones and copy paste here. As well, I have it, for example, uh, these eyes. Okay, let me go zoom out and this is very high resolution eyes um, that I created when I because sometimes you need to replace eyes in the model and uh, as I said before you know if you're Patreon you, I think it's free pack you can access to this eyes so you can use it how you want it if you're not Patreon you can just uh, use different techniques I'll show you in a second okay we'll go right there let's go look maybe even smaller and I'm just be sure they're kind of going right there. We'll go switch this to soft light or overlay. Which one I wanted. Yeah, let's go with overlay. So we'll go with overlay on this. And I'm copying because we have two eyes. Put it right there. On the one eye, let's go set mask. And uh, mask hold down alt click on a mask so it's create and hide for us and we'll have our brush white color 20 percent should be good good and we can just start painting inside here and you can see we can bring good details smooth little bit even roundness around so it will add higher details to our eyes Okay, so this is one eye. We'll go click on another eye. Again, hold down Alt Option, click on the mask. It's hiding and we can just paint in this eye as well. We just increase some details on the eyes. Um, what I was saying, you don't need it if you don't have those packs or whatever. You can also just create um, clouds put clouds motion blur from inside and overlay them as well. I'm going to select those two, group them, call it I, and I'm going to actually bring creating um, curves. There you go. We'll connect curves to ours, it's luminosity, and we'll just brighten them up, bring them a little bit more in. And we have two choices. We can go with soft light, contrast or we can go with luminosity and luminosity we can just bring them a little bit brighter we can also just go with contrast i think there was just a little bit, a bit darker so we'll just see 
bring like this around. Okay, yeah. let's go ahead. Okay. Zoom out. We still need to add a little bit more dimension and we'll do that with our dodge and burn. Okay. Yeah, I think this is just bring a little bit. I think that will work good. Okay, there you go. We have it, our eyes. Um, let's go next, work on a hair. So control shift alt E command option alt E on a Mac. We'll call this hair. Okay, and I want to create a doll hair, kind of smooth dice. So for this one, we'll go use it filter, stylize oil painting. And in oil painting, we're going to set stylization 10, cleanness 10, scale 01, brush 04. We can do lighting. Lighting will create a little bit more um, effect if we need it. And I think we need this kind of. So let's go ahead, click OK. It's applied to everything. We'll fix this in a second. What I want to do is go filter sharpness and run unsharp mask. I want to add details more to our effect. Click OK. Okay. And now we don't want to do this everywhere. Yes. So we have it alt. Click on the mask hiding. Take our brush 10%. And again, with white color, we can brush in right here where we can control connect. So it will look cleaner. So we'll go all around these areas. And we'll just start kind of cleaning. And it's worked very well where we kind of merging with other hair. So it will add this kind of cleanness, uniformness and uh, work very, very well with uh, our merging what we've done before. Okay, let's go right there. We can do also on a feather a little bit. It's work very well. And we can go down and right here where we will last details on this dress. We want to actually add a little bit here. What it does, it's create those kind of strokes, almost elements, and it will perceive as a details that will last without. So it's kind of look nicer. Okay. So let's look what we have before and after. You can see how hair become a little bit cleaner. So at this moment, I think dodge and burn, we can start work on this. I'll create new layer. Okay. We'll call it dodge and burn and it's got multiple ways you can do it. Usually what I do, I fill up this layer with 50% gray, normal mode of past 100, switch the layer to the soft light and I will just use the black and white. Uh, brushes to work a little bit more on the shapes and how I said before the remember color does not give it to us okay only we perceive shapes with the black and white and overall image have it only two informations for us it's have it luminosity or contrast black and white and color information color is optional sometimes it's good lead information but usually it is does not give it us any shape information. So shape is coming from black and white. And that's what I'm doing right now. So I'm just taking shadows and I'm creating a little bit more shape with the shadows. Okay. By adding dimensions. So we're going to go right here, create similar like with the lips, switch to the white. Let's make higher specular lighting and higher specular lighting. It's highlights the small bright dots. They will create a little bit more plastic view. And that's what we're going to do after. Kind of highlights a little bit artificial almost. Okay. And I'm using bracket key up and down to, um, create these kind of highlights. See, we're increasing. So we're creating those highlights specular. So let's go with the eyes. Also, we're creating a little bit on our eyes. Okay. Just a little bit specular lighting here. Ooh, that one look ugly. Right that eye. There you go. Okay. If you look just on the face, before and after you can see how we add a little bit shape a little bit more with the shadows and highlights and this is what point of this to do to add more shapes so we are on a dark let's go 
to add more around here and don't worry too much if you go in the backgrounds again we'll remove backgrounds in a second just pop up a little bit lights on this okay same we need it in the hands and the hands actually uh, I was adding shadows but we don't because we need add actually brightness we'll come back to this and reasons why I'm adding brightness to this because we will have it fire coming from them yes so we want kind of highlights almost to do this way so that's what we do we'll just add a little bit usually I do just first body and after environmental but we'll combine in this case and we'll just do like right here a little bit brighter on the sides and middle we'll just add shadows between two fires there you go okay let's look overall before and after and i think we are ready to actually go ahead and replace background so and for this i'm going to take from um, my preset of the backgrounds rendering them in the view application so this is a library some creepy library i don't know that will we're going to use this one um i'll see we'll maybe switch Again, if you Patreon, you'll have access to most of these backgrounds for free. And remember, if you Patreon, it does help me to create more sets, to create more videos and other things. So your help is greatly appreciated. Okay, so what are we going to do with this? Let's hold down Alt and click. So we'll hide it. And now with 10%, we actually can start painting in. And because I don't want all the way i call this kind of almost like overlay blending and the reason is by overlay because we see foreground and background we don't 100 percent replace it if i need 100 percent replace i'll probably use a pen tool like in my other videos and i will just go very close to the um, edge and we'll do this so right here we don't do this we'll just do this kind of overlay closer so we can see background and foreground and in some cases, it's give it this perception of more um, painting art. You know, it's not real. It's not um, what I call a photo, total photorealistic. It's more as art going in this case. But it's what I kind of like to do with this type of images. And it's okay if you just step a little bit over because it's give it this semi-translucity effect. It's just kind of nice what we're going after. And we always can replace, remember, we have the ability to work on opacity, work on the blending mode, so we can play around with this if we feel like. Okay, I'm going like right there, closer. Go decrease size, again, use a bracket key when you need to increase or decrease size of your brush. Uh, with the shortcuts, just use it remember one shortcut per time and I also recommend if you're like on a Windows or Mac you have it in notes and I usually open a note uh, notebook or a notepad and write their shortcuts and I sticky notes actually it's what it's called sticky notes and I put sticky notes on my screen for example let me find like right here you see sticky note and this one for I think for the blender that one is for the blender and i'll sometimes use for different when i need to remember some of shortcuts i'll write them down there just it's mine it's not like big sheets it's just what i need to remember and of course just after time i delete them or leave it there but it's helped me to remember because you don't you don't want to sit down and try to remember all shortcuts at, at once it's very bad you will forget the best used when you use best remember when you use them and that's what i found it's worked for me so right here you can see we kind of start blending backdrop in here and because she's in the middle i won't be sure the line is going from middle kind of there you go kind of somewhat because it's, how say, it's art it's a doll head whatever i think this way it's worked very well 
So next, I want to add some fire in your hand, like at these um, fires coming from both hands. And for this, I'm going to use it just fires PNG. And these fires is actually render um, from Invanto elements. So it's kind of like subscriptions element. You can have it. I do like it because it's helped me very fast to find elements and I'm not sponsored by them. It's just what I use used many times. So if you need it, you can look on those and right here. And this is save it as PNGs or radius or all what I need to do. Switch them to the screen mode and they're like magically. They go start putting on a hand. Of course, we want to modify this. So I want to add like additional flames maybe right here let's go to switch screens on this okay right tool right there it's kind of almost like going up a bit more magically i think this way we'll put it another one go right there same switch to the screen there's our two flames um, notice we don't have it any light fall on her, not on the hands or anything. So for this one, we actually want to take these two, uh, all these flames, group them together. Flame just below this. Let's create new layer. And let's go call light. This light I want to switch to um, soft light mode. Okay. Blending mode soft light. And we're going to use this flame color orangey yellow brush 10 percent soft and we'll go paint with this and what's happening when we do you can see we'll cast color and a little bit lighting because it's brighter so that's what we want to do we want kind of like almost on the hands right here painting this color so but don't worry about too much of course it's a magic if it was a real flame probably her hands will start burning okay but for us because it's a magic we can just like a painting around there and maybe a little bit on the face right here going right there okay sometimes it's look like a little bit too much going remember we have it also opacity but generally what I like to do beside opacity I like to create actually a mask on this and with a mask can control it because it's sometimes very hard to take it from first time when you create get right with the lighting okay it's a little bit harder so I think the with mask work a little bit better in some cases and right here right there so we have it kind of done okay let's go select little bit more reddish color from far away we'll just add it yeah red and yellow kind of right there there you go okay and now we can take it um our 10 percent opacity and i can just like you know what maybe in, instead 10 let's go with lower let's go like with five and i'm using mouse um, yeah, I do have it a Vicom pad. Some people ask, and I do have it uh, drawing screen, so all that stuff. But you know, we're not always having those. So in mouse, actually work okay. Also, if we go closer, like right here, I want where the lights maybe not going. So just kind of create better on the 3D highlights because highlights will go from light. So we'll go create right there same just hide just a little bit out right there and darker there you go Ooh, right here a little bit too bright too hot on this case there you go okay let's go zoom out A 
let's hide it right there a little bit okay let's look before and after you can see color casting does work very well next let's create uh, on top of the flame create new we'll call it light one more time let's go ahead go with soft light um we'll switch again let's create our color warmer what we have before five percent and I, normally what i do i create one small in the middle increase 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 couple so what it does is just create this environmental kind of almost glow from lights and we can again go here decrease smaller okay let's go to a little bit less okay and actually right there a little bit more there you go so this is more environmental kind of glowing um we can also play with this just just about I think right here okay let's create a new layer and this will be our smoke okay for the smoke we want to be sure it's a white color now let's take our brush right click and i'm going to use um actually it's a ron's brushes so those brushes is you can purchase them on das 3d so i get it from divnia um, and I found they're actually very good brush since a lot of them nice. Um, in this case, I'm going to use the steam brush. You can see like right there and we'll go 0 per, uh, 100% opacity white color. So we'll just click create one. We'll go select another steam one. And we'll go click. So the two kind of a little bit different looking, but it does help us. We can go switch to the soft light. So this will help us let's create a new layer and usually i do um multiple okay let's go smoke two call it okay we'll go a little bit less let's go see what we can find yeah there you go let's go reduce this one in size a little bit like right there we'll go another one and when you mix them it's what you want you don't want to just use it one you want to use it different variations okay you want to use a different combinations of them okay and we'll go right there put it like right there so it is you can see the depth so we don't want one gray color we don't want one white we want the different shapes we want different um darker lighter so they're all going up and down this is what will create our for our dimensions as well this luminosity level okay we have it fit right there let's go work on our food let's go call it fog and we'll just lay kind of on the bottom make a little bit more blend right around there for this we'll go select so i'm going to use the fog runs fog just select one of the maybe this one fog and just uh, blend it and here's the interesting things when you start doing this way you'll notice the characters start blending with the background and it's the reason it's almost like overlay what's going it's what we try to do it's kind of how are our eyes working blending in so let's go create new layer it's environmental dodge and burn 50% gray fill up and before I did it soft light mode if you remember before I did just on her but what I was meaning by environmental it is we need it overall how the lights going so for example do we want to bright up these areas Ooh, too bright let's go 10% I don't need 100% so like right there we want bright around these areas yes and we want to switch darker and let's add more shadows to the ground right here where she's standing so this way we actually framing with the lights because our eyes will go to the bright spot when we start it's going to bright spot and when you have more details 
that will keep it your vision. So wherever you have it, more teeny tiny details, then we are kind of stop focusing our attention and start looking on those details. It's meaning we don't want details be all over our image. We don't want to have a details, uh, teeny tiny with no details. So we want details in specific area, like maybe right here where I want to focus. People kind of look on her hair, on all the stuff, but at the same time, we want to remove it. With the lighting, it's going this way. So our eyes, by automatically, they will go to the brighter spot. Okay. And it's what we're trying to do. Face, hands, this is our trio, what we try to do. Um, and rest, it's all going kind of with shadows, so we're focusing them on one. So when we have it a little bit hard, sometimes, like right here, you can see it's very dark. We can always use this multiply mode. Okay, let's go select color right there. In a multiply mode, we can also add a little bit more deeper um, shadows because with the dodge and burn, we're not truly going to absolute black color. With the multiply, we can, and that's what we're going to use. We're going to use this multiply mode to make darker in those areas. And mostly right here with the floor. I want to create kind of casting almost like right there. Okay. Uh, right there, a little bit brighter. I don't need it. White color right here. I want to put it too much multiply in this area. I want to remove. And also if it's casting, maybe just a little bit right there on the ground. So it just help somewhat work. Okay. So we created this image. Now I want to create color on this. So let's go first add the grain. And the reason is why I'm adding grain, because if you look on the images, all this pixelization, some of them have it more grain, some have it less grain. So like right here, you can see material, we have it grain, yes? Go look on the skin when we smooth, it's no grain. Stuff where we're importing, no grain, very smooth. So it's all mixed up. Uh, one interesting thing, so if we create new layer, Okay, let's go call it grain. And this one is our uh, multiply. So in a grain, we'll go fill up 50% gray. Going to filter, noise, add noise, and we'll just add 5%. Don't need it much. And I will get to soft light. So now at this point, if we go and can look, we'll see consistency. So we'll see consistency in a grain, and it's what we're going to see how right here before. And after you see all this grain and it's got consistency to everywhere. So it's make us for our eyes look like it's all done at the same time. Like it's everything together. Okay. So we've done this. Let's apply some colors to there and we can apply colors a couple of ways. One, we can use like external applications and I fan of the filter forge. So I'll show you how to do filter forge and we'll also will use it. Um, there are other ways <laughs> with the selective colors or curves we can also create this and usually what i want to do it is work with complementary colors so it's what i mean complementary we have the blue we want yellow as opposite so they are kind of work to get a cold hot kind of colors so for this control shift rt command option alt e to create new layer combining everything we'll call it filter forge and we're going to now Okay, go to filter, filter forge. Um, this is an application because filters is developed by creators or by users mostly, and it's a literal thousands, thousands filters. Um, you can search also for Geek at Play. I have many filters like this one is I create that filter um, in filter forge. For those who are interested, it's just showing very fast. So right here. Um, it's a filter and you can see a bunch of notes, how it's work. So in general, I done this because I want to color correct it. I want co color correct it in my way. So I create this filter and it's free. You can download it. However, however, application is not free. You actually will need you have 30 days trial or you can purchase. Um, one interesting thing is what you can do. You can have it one application trial and you can create filters. When your filters become popular, they, you will 
assign the points and I can actually get a lifetime free upgrade whatever application for free okay so right here let's go see I'm going blue color oh I like this one so we can go on the settings and let me add just a little bit of pinch of the one more color and we can cycle no not too cold let's go a little bit like this yes I want to have it cold and warm so kind of for the colors the work combination and you can see it's faster we just click OK and it's applied so next okay let's look before and you can see it's not just this it's contrast luminosity all the stuff so this is one way to do it and usually I will do both ways I'll create this way another ones we can go to create selective colors in selective colors we'll start with the blacks we'll take blacks bring maybe to about minus two three around there I don't like crush black for different reasons and we have it right here yellows will go to the blue so it's meaning all the blacks will have the blue tint add a little bit of the green and cyan so this is will be our cold we can go to neutral because majority of what it is and we'll take two the yellow you can pinch of and red and you can see we are playing with those cold hot colors so you can do with this way as well in some cases maybe you want to work with the whites and you can see just highlights you can bring them more up and down whatever you think is will work better and same with coloring sometimes actually colder yeah let's go like right there say on color and of course remember because you have it option for the opacity and we can add remove opacity on this one so I'll go bring this way same with filter forge just slide bit down okay and also you can can create the curves this is another way to coloring and a curves you can go to color mode we don't need luminosity we want to affect only colors and switch between blue we'll take bottom bring up middle just slightly below it's a one curve remember it's a yellow blue kind of working and on the red we'll just take cyan a little bit down and restore our curve to the top so it's again this is what call kind of like cine curve cinema curve um I sometimes use but in this case probably not but this is cine curve and selective color you can do almost same what is done in filter forge so it's just a little bit faster okay when we're done with this what we want to do is go ahead put it our name and you can name it how you want it you can put it wherever you prefer put it my personal preference I like to put it just below and make it is slightly visible because yeah I want to say hey I did this but I want this is my attention the center piece not uh, logo of course um, the one thing you can also apply some more effect on a glow if you need it create and for example this plugin on Eric from glow on Eric it's a very excellent tool to work with this I did not use it in this production because I don't feel needed however you may want to add some glow and some effect if you need it if you feel like overall this is for me a little bit more like illustrations what's going on well I appreciate you watching this video hopefully you found this useful and you'll take some techniques to use it and you know what let's go do this way let's go click post processing and right here it's what we started with if you remember we have this image we expanded apply it change dolls head will change all this um, shapes of figurines work with colors and again before and after thank you again if you like it please give it thumbs up put it like subscribe to the channel it does help me also to produce and please join to become the patreon to receive all these extra benefits and bonuses to uh, be a member of patreon thanks and have a fun time to creating